Uh, Gabriel, let's start with you. Just give us a sense what it was like, a Maori Troilus and Cressida. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, you walk into the globe and you begin to realise that uh, these are Maoris not only on stage, they're Maoris in the audience. And certainly at, by the end of that show, they do a haka to say goodbye and you think, whoa, this power war. But then the audience start doing it back and everyone sort of freezes. You don't know where this could end. I mean, the whole the whole of the globe sort of erupts in this kind of demonstration of kind of power and masculinity, uh, really a kind of reworking of the play, which is about kind of people being torn apart by well, war. Well, I was going to ask you, Kamala, I mean, did you follow it? Because there are no subtitles, surtitles. You do follow it rather well. And, and you know, Trollis and Crest is a play which I read years ago, I had no memory of, um, and I looked up sort of a two-paragraph summary, but what happens is they have they have sort of minimalist surtitles in as much as they, they just tell you what is happening in the scene. And really that's enough. And, and in part, of course, it may be because this was an exceptionally physical performance. Um, there is dance, there's action. So you're really concentrating on the expressiveness. And it's enough that you've got the three-sentence summary. You know, this is where his heart is breaking and that's where she's going off to sleep with someone I mean, else. You, are, you and I are probably in that situation of having read Troilus and Cressida sort of 30 years ago, 20 in your case. 20, <laughs> 20 um, but, come on. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless, I mean... Ten, it, I thought. It, it, was, it seemed to be very clear that by the end of this production, you and I, I think, both realised that we hadn't quite remembered that we don't speak Maori. OK, well, because let's what, listen. What was going we on actually, was... as they say, yes. have a moment from the play to play to you. Which bit of the play was that from? <laughs> well, I think that's probably the the play all the way through, <laughs> yes, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yes, um, yes. I mean, Hector and Achilles, no doubt. <laughs> Maybe not one of the love bits. I mean, the, the play Possibly. threw up some really kind of problematic kind of stuff. I mean, you could really see kind of masculinity kind of running wild and doing down the girls. You, you could see that, and it felt kind of problematic. Okay. Can we but, just widen the frame for a moment and ask, uh, in, in this celebratory moment, a kind of sceptical question, which is... You're right, there are only very few surtitles. Does this mean this is a season which is actually largely for initiates? It's for Shakespeare buffs. Even if you've read it 20 years ago, there are large sectors of the population that will have never read Trollis and Cressida. Well, I think one thing you have to bear in mind, isn't it, Bart? It's for people who do understand the words being said on the stage. There was a sizable amount of the audience who were laughing with the jokes. Um, I know for the Urdu taming of the shrew, a lot of my Pakistani friends are planning mm -hmm. to go. So you're getting audiences into the globe who might not right, otherwise okay. come. And, and for a city with, like London, that's, I think, a very important yeah. part. The, the, only English, the only English I heard for Measure of Measure this evening was, get your hot dogs here. <laughs> All the rest of it was, was Russian. You mean, I mean the so audience was Russian? The audience is, is Russian. I mean, that, that's one of the, the possibilities that you can come to the globe mm -hmm. today it, supposedly your city, London, is my city, but the world is in London and a new version of London is being thrown up. Not only is it the globe, the sort of London then, there, but it's kind of this Maori London here, this Russian London here. The possibilities that, th that are thrown up are endless, but two things come out. Yesterday, the Maori Twilight and Cresta was fantastically communicative. You got it immediately. The Russian measure for measure is closed. Hmm. The Russians aren't in a position in which they're willing at the moment to communicate to non-Russians. Well, you speakers, also saw a Venus me. and Adonis, not a play that I know well since it's a poem, but uh, this was a South African version. This was a South African version. I went with a South African friend, but there, there are many different languages of South Africa in there, and she hardly knew any of them. Um, and you didn't feel that the audience necessarily knew the languages, but again, there was a lot of music and dance in that, um, and it was very expressive and performative, and it was... Fantastic. I do think that, that the ones that are using dance and music more will naturally communicate more. 
I'm interested to see what will happen with something like Hamlet, where you have the long soliloquies, um, where, you know, if you don't know what's going on... I mean, it's a twin track, I think, isn't it? If, if you know your Hamlet or have mm. recently read it up before yes. you go, you'll have one kind of uh, journey. Absolutely. But another journey that's possible for you, think only of the South Korean Midsummer Night's Dream that's coming up, and I'm definitely going to go and see. There are the South Koreans living with their dark, evil twin just over the border, and here's this kind of play which is about what is it like when we pass into the kind of dark side of our dreams what do you think you've got to see that okay you? Well, what do you and th- Cymbeline <laughs> from South Sudan all right you two sound like PR <laughs> people for the season let me ask you a question which is this is Shakespeare without language in the, other than for the Russians who were there this evening or the South Africans mm-hmm. or however it's an interesting issue that the thing that matters least in these 37 productions at least for the people is the language. Do you feel sort of odd about that, Kamala? I don't feel even remotely odd about it. And in part, it's because I've seen so many Shakespeare adaptations in in different versions. So you mentioned the the Japanese King Lear. Now, one of the things that happened with that was there was an Indian filmmaker who saw that and thought, fantastic, I can take this storyline and put it in the Bombay underworld. And you've got a film called Makbul. And he only late, I mean, he did read Macbeth before doing it, but he came to Shakespeare via Japan. Um, And the thing is, Shakespeare is very good on content and psychology. I mean, the language, of course, is exceptional. Um, But, you know, my interest in in Shakespeare has to do with power and corruption are are the two things that I think he's so good on, which is why I did find looking at the program that I was interested most in the pairing of the country with the play and the most sort of politically fraught countries are the ones I want to see rather than the p- plays I love the most. If you think about the journey we've made through Shakespeare having written those plays, his language, his mighty kind of engine, has taken us through to points of kind of spiritual, psychological insight, which are fantastic in a process of storytelling. Mm. Another culture grabs hold of that and can run with it in another direction that you haven't seen. You've got to go around that corner, Philip. Well, listen, I'm I'm sure I'll be with you around the corner, but I still want to keep asking questions. And one of the questions, Kamala says quite rightly, that power and corruption are at the heart of it. And, of course, one of the odd things about this, it's part of this Olympic Olympicization of culture that's going in London, which actually is all about showcasing Great Britain, as you notice every time you come back into the country uh, and have to show your passport. It feels to me, at certain ways, the kind of fag end of cool Britannia, the notion that actually you can run the whole of world cultures through an English writer, Kamala, and then Gabriel. I, I mean, you know, I'm not thinking at all about the Olympiad when I'm there or any of it, but I did notice and was somewhat amused and dismayed and cynical by the fact that it, it ends with the Globe's own company doing Henry V. What a surprise. With, you know, so that we can see, you know, and if you want to be cynical, you can say, well, you know, the foreigners do their bit. And then at the end, we all stand up in Shakespearean English, cry God for Harry, England and very St. George. Very briefly, Gabriel. Yeah, as, as a reviewer, I do get to get a very nice seat. But basically, <laughs> in my heart and soul, I'm a groundling. And uh, this evening, looking up at the oligarch's box, sort of watching the kind of the stage action, that for me is a kind of version of what's going on with the Olympics. The Olympics is big people, and me, I'm just watching it from the ground. Camilla and Gabriel.